Alrighty, so I have a video today that is going to be all about Six Flags and the stock market crashed this morning. So today, Friday, uh, in the morning, the stocks for Six Flags Entertainment um, dropped 19% by opening. That's one of their big uh, biggest drops in a really long time and one of the lowest prices in about five years. A lot of people are asking why. Um, well, it became apparent very late last night that Six Flags has struggling operations in China and the U.S. So it looks like two of their properties um, that they were planning to open uh, by July this year are not going to be opening and they might have completely fallen through. Now, the good news is Six Flags actually didn't pay anything or invest anything into those properties. So the money was completely coming from third party investors and Six Flags was just slapping their name on it. But the problem is that is revenue that they promised to stockholders and investors. And now they've lost that. So um, it looks like they lost only in reality about one million dollars in estimated revenue for Q4. Again, the properties aren't supposed to open till um, July. So that doesn't count for Q4. But um, the bigger loss that the company is expected to have in Q4 is an $8 million to $10 million um, loss compared to the same time last year. That's significant. So that's on their American properties. Um, so this isn't new. For anyone that knows Six Flags, Six Flags always has these bad omens occur when it comes to international property. Um, Six Flags will announce they're going to open this property, that property, they're buying this, they're buying that. And in reality, it never works out. So whenever I, it was so funny in our Discord server, we've been talking about this for a while. We don't even think the Dubai um, property is going to end up being built either. Uh, it's just like Six Flags has that really bad omen. Who did they murder in their last life? Um, they're never able to open these international properties. Um, but who knows? They do have this new CEO. He is uh, he worked for PepsiCo and he was part of the international um, aspect of PepsiCo. So maybe he'll have better luck uh, <laughs> getting Six Legs into those international markets. But I think it's time that Six Legs takes a step back like Cedar Fair and focuses on their American properties. Um, but that being said, um, a lot of people are asking why. Why is Six Flags struggling with their American properties? Why is their stock market continue to crash? I think this is their second or third crash um, this year. It is one of the worst. And again, it is coming after bad news. And this is very normal for um, a company whenever bad news is forecasted or there's rumors of bad news. The stock market or the stocks for the company are obviously going to drop. And um, yes, I do predict that they're going to climb again. I don't think this is permanent. I think you're going to see them balanced off a little bit. You're going to see a lot of investors super upset that the uh, properties in China aren't going to open. Six Flags will probably come forward and be like, well, you know what? We're going to open up this property here to calm down investors. Or we're going to focus on, you know, our American properties. And we're going to boost attendance and revenue. They'll come up with some sort of strategic plan. The new CEO will say his piece on like some news sites and articles um and the stock market or so i keep saying stock market the stocks for six legs are going to climb um slowly as well so last time i checked it was back to only an 18 percent drop from 19 percent. so as i was just saying you're going to see them going up again um the only bad news is wells fargo has downgraded the six flags stock worth twice today so um they downgraded to equal uh weight late Thursday night, um, and then they downgraded it once again this morning um, after the news about the American properties not doing so hot as well. So Six Flags has announced this Friday morning that it is struggling in the China and the United States market. So that's not good news. Um, a lot of people are kind of wondering what's going on in the United States market. I honestly thought they were doing really well this year because Cedar Fair has been coming out with records and records and records. We're also hearing that Cedar Point alone sold 500,000 gold passes for 2020. Can you imagine 500,000 gold passes in the 2020 season alone? Gold passes. That's not including platinum passes. That's not including your regular season pass. 500,000 gold passes. 
that park is going to break some serious attendance records. We know that other parks at Canada's Wonderland, Kings Island, Carowinds, they're all doing well too. Um, Knott's Berry Farm is doing exceptionally well. They're, they've crossed into the 6 million attendance um, line. So Cedar Fair is doing extremely well. Maybe Six Flags needs to take a step back and learn from Cedar Fair on how to increase um, their season pass sales. Because it looks like, from what I'm reading on the reports, it looks like season passes are or memberships are what are lacking at Six Flags American Market. Um, but a lot of people are pointing out that this looks like it's history repeating itself. Um, I do have a comment about that. It isn't history repeating itself. It, it looks like history repeating itself. It looks like Six Flags is buying up all these properties and then they're not succeeding and then they're going to end up in a large amounts of debt and then they're going to go bankrupt. That's simply not the case. Um, Six Flags actually hasn't invested any money into these properties um, in the international market. So whenever this the plans fall through or it doesn't happen. Six Flags really isn't losing any money. They didn't put any money into it. Um, it was all through third party investors. The name Six Flags was just being sopped on it and they were going to receive um, revenue um, from the name being on the park. So it really isn't a loss to Six Flags again. And uh, it isn't history repeating itself. I get it. It looks like it, but it's not. So I just wanted to get that point out there because a lot of people were sending me that message. Oh, it's like history repeating itself. Um, it's not. But um, a lot of people are uh, pointing out that, you know, um, Six Flags versus Cedar Fair. Six Flags is almost like the discount chain. Uh, Six Flags has the discount entertainment. Six Flags is almost like the dollar store brand compared to Cedar Point. So you go to Six Flags for, you know, those old world record breaking coasters because Six Flags used to really compete against Cedar Fair and other parks in terms of building world record breaking roller coasters, but it seems Cedar Fair has the equation down pat. Cedar Fair puts a giga coaster, uh, a dive coaster, a hyper coaster, and then like, you know, their invert, like it, they put those big staple roller coasters in all their big parks. And then they introduce Winterfest. Yes, Six Legs has Holiday in the Park, but Winterfest is solely focused on the entertainment aspect. Again, I got to finally experience that at Canada's Wonderland. And when I look at the entertainment aspect of a Six Legs Park, it doesn't come anywhere close to the entertainment that Winterfest, especially at Canada's Wonderland, had offered in the 2019 season. Um, it just seems like Cedar Fair knows how to draw in everyone. Six Flags knows how to draw in a very marginal audience, and Cedar Fair knows how to target everyone. So they're getting your grandma, your grandparents, like your neighbors. They're getting everyone to come to their parks for the entertainment, the food. Um, although I will argue that Six Flags Great Adventure had better food than any um, Cedar Fair park that I had been to yet. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, it's just all well-rounded at Cedar Fair, and Six Flags seems to just focus on cheap, 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 discount, discount, discount. Like, buy a membership now, lowest price ever, blah, blah, blah. And if someone is between a Cedar Fair park and a Six Flags park, I'm assuming, again, assumptions, that they're going to choose to go to the Cedar Fair park. Depending, I mean, there's some arguments like Dorney Park versus Great Adventure. Obviously, you're going to choose to go to Great Adventure. Um, now, Great Adventure is an interesting topic. I have a whole video coming out about the future of Great Adventure because I honestly think Great Adventure's got a very bright future um, in terms of it. Now, um, I do also have a Cedar Fair video I'm working on because I received some news about some financial news about Cedar Fair um, putting some money aside to buy some future property. Um, and there are things in stockholders calls that suggest what properties they may be going after. We know that Cedar Fair is looking at Texas um, and some family owned parks. And uh, again, they're going to be focusing on North America. So very interesting to see what Cedar Fair versus Six Flags has to do with um, the company's growth. Obviously, what Cedar Fair is doing is working. And I know that there are going to be some Six Flags fans sliding into my DMs or talking amongst each other about how horrible of a person I am because I made this video. Um, it is so funny. Like I can make a video hating on Cedar Point and people will just comment in the comment section. I make a video talking about the facts about Six Flags that are presented right in front of us. Um, and people will literally say the most horrible things about me because I made a video about it. Anyways, that's all I have to say on that. Um, Six Flags is obviously going to recover from this. This is not the end of Six Flags, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, but nonetheless, it'll be interesting to see what the new CEO does with this information. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. Have a good one, guys. Bye.